singers, I'm Sarah Lieb and this is SingingTV.com. Together you and I, we're making singing simple. Uh, I'm with you today with a special question that came from a viewer from Ruth uh, Donaraj. And here's the question. It says, Hey Sarah, I'm not a singer, but I used to sing a lot as a kid in church musicals and school choir. Eventually I switched to piano, partly because I noticed how some people just seem to produce a more interesting tone without training or trying. I figured whatever it was, I didn't have it. In particular, I always noticed the vibrato. I've always sung without any, and I don't think I've ever used it even by accident. Why do some people sing naturally with vibrato? I've heard it can be learned. How long does that take? Um, so to add to this question, I didn't have the exact answer, so um, I talked to a specialist. Uh, Dr. James Burns is a board-certified otolaryngologist, a doctor of otolaryngology and laryngeal surgeon at Mass General in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so I asked him about the question and he said a couple things. I'm going to read you his email and his letter and then we'll talk about it just a little bit. So from Dr. James Burns, vibrato comes from an agonist-antagonist relationship primarily between the thyroid and the cricothyroid muscles, although I believe at least one study also included the lateral cricothyroid as they found vibrato was not only a slight variation in pitch, but also intensity. There can also be an accompanying oscillation of the uh, laryngopharyngeal structures during this agonist-antagonist movement due to the back and forth rocking motion of the thyroid cartilage over the cricoid. This alters vocal tract resonances as well. If one sings with straight tone, the singer is not allowing for the above action to occur, whether intentionally or not. I'd suspect, although I can't speak scientifically to this, that development of vibrato is related to musical skill and overall muscle coordination. Yes, the vibrato can be learned, but the timeline as to when this occurs has too many variables in order to be answered definitively. So what that means is you can't say, you know, this is exactly how long it's going to take to learn how to sing with vibrato. He said, again, musical skill, learning strength, both motoric and cognitive, etc. Uh, it's the kind, it's kind of like asking how long it would take someone to learn how to swim. In my opinion, some people pick it up quickly, others may continually struggle. Hope this helps. Best, Dr. Burns. So that answers the question from a scientific standpoint. Let me see if I can interpret just a little bit. When uh, Dr. Burns says that vibrato comes from the agonist-antagonist relationship primarily between the thyroid and cricothyroid muscles, what he's saying is that agonist-antagonist uh, relationship, muscles come in pairs, and in order for um, the vocal folds, which are uh, the technical term for the vocal folds of the thyroid muscle, that's what he means when he's uh, talking there, that thyroid muscle, in order to go higher or lower, has to stretch, um, which is what that agonist-antagonist relationship means. Um, as we go higher, the vocal folds become longer, and they shorten as the pitch goes lower. But in order for the vocal folds to do that, um, there are other muscles that help, and it's the cricothyroid muscle um, muscles that do that. So what he's saying is it's the relationship between those two muscles um, that help create the vibrato, although it's an interesting point. There's also at least one study that includes the lateral cricorytenoid as they found some vibrato was not only uh, a slight variation in pitch but also intensity. So basically what we're saying here is you have to be able to train both he says cognitive and motoric, meaning you have to train both your muscles and your muscle memory and also your thoughts in order to be able to use them, those muscles in the way that are creating vibrato. So although today's lesson is not going to be a lesson on this is exactly what you have to do to create vibrato, we'll cover that in another lesson, um, I wanted to kind of answer scientifically exactly what it was that creates vibrato um, for you, Ruth. And I hope that that helps and answers some questions there. Uh, we'll get more information on this and we'll maybe do a lesson or two um, later about how it is that you can work. I'll give you some exercises and stuff. For now, I hope that answers your questions. I'm Sarah Lee. This is Singing TV. Special thanks to Dr. Jim Burns at Mass General. We really appreciate it here at Singing TV. Uh, together, you and I, we're making singing simple.